A promise of batteries so cheap they almost sound impossible. $10 for a kilowatt hour, numbers that bend belief. It's the kind of shift that doesn't just change markets, it changes lives. What makes it stranger is the source, not a rare element pulled from deep earth, but salt, the most ordinary substance on our tables. Yet from this simplicity comes a claim that feels anything but ordinary. The world's largest battery maker says it has unlocked a future no one thought possible. But with no explanations, only silence, we're left asking, miracle or carefully crafted illusion? The weight of the claim. To understand the weight of this promise, we have to look back. In 2008, a single kilowatt hour of lithium battery storage cost more than $1,400. That price made electric cars a luxury toy and home storage a fantasy for most families. Over 16 long years, engineers and scientists fought to cut that number down. New chemistries, better factories, smarter supply chains, step by step, the cost fell. By 2024, the world finally reached the long-awaited point, about $115 per kilowatt hour. At that level, electric cars became affordable and batteries entered ordinary homes. Now imagine hearing that all of that struggle, all of that progress, has been outpaced overnight. $10 instead of $100. Not a gentle step forward, but a staggering leap. It would be like discovering that stone has turned to air. Numbers like that don't just lower costs. They rewrite what we thought was possible. A company at the peak. To make sense of this announcement, you have to consider who is making it. CATL isn't a newcomer fighting for attention. It is the largest battery maker in the world. Its cells power millions of electric cars, from Teslas to luxury German brands, and countless buses, trucks, and storage projects across the globe. By any measure, CATL has already won the lithium race. They sit at the top of the mountain. That is why this move feels unsettling. Why would the king of lithium suddenly turn to sodium? It would be like a champion walking away from the very sport they dominate. Or like a company built on burgers suddenly deciding to sell only pizza. You don't do that unless you see something larger coming. For CATL, this shift raises more questions than it answers. If the leader in lithium is preparing for a new era, then maybe lithium's reign is not as permanent as we once believed. The nature of sodium. At its core, sodium works much like lithium. Both store energy by moving ions back and forth between two sides of the cell. Think of it as a shuttle, carrying passengers to one station when charging and back again when power is needed. The process is simple, elegant, and proven. But sodium brings a few twists. It is naturally safer. It does not carry the same risk of overheating, swelling, or bursting into flame. For anyone who has worried about phones catching fire or electric cars burning after crashes, that difference matters. Safety has always been sodium's quiet strength. Still, sodium was never the first choice. The reason is clear. It stores less energy in the same weight, and it wears down more quickly with use. For vehicles and long-term storage, that was a serious drawback. So even though sodium could be found in oceans and deserts, its role was small, overshadowed by lithium's superior performance. The Paradox of Abundance Salt is one of the most common materials on Earth. It fills our oceans, covers ancient seabeds, and rests in vast underground deposits. You would think a battery built from such abundance would be cheap by default. But that has never been the case. For years, sodium batteries were surprisingly expensive, often more costly than their lithium counterparts. The issue wasn't the raw element. It was the way it had to be shaped, refined, and assembled. Each step in production added hidden costs. Factories optimized for lithium had no easy way to handle sodium. Yields were low, cells age faster, and no one wanted to gamble on building massive new lines for a chemistry that couldn't yet prove itself. So sodium remained stuck. Too common to ignore, but too costly to embrace. It lived in the shadow of lithium, waiting for the rare moment when abundance could finally become an advantage. That moment, if CATL is right, may be arriving now. CATL's salt revolution. CATL has given its sodium battery a name, Naxtra. At first glance, it looks like any other battery pack, but what lies inside is different. The company plans two versions. 
One is built for heavy-duty trucks, designed to handle the stress of constant starting and stopping. The other is meant for passenger cars, carrying families on daily commutes and long drives. What stands out most is how these batteries perform under extreme conditions. CATL claims Naxtra can operate from minus 40 degrees Celsius to 70 above. That means it can endure Siberian winters and scorching deserts without losing its strength. Even in a brutal cold, it keeps 90% of its usable energy. For regions where harsh winters have made electric vehicles unreliable, this could be the turning point. It is not just a technical detail. It is a way to open entire landscapes, frozen roads, mountain passes, and desert highways to clean power. In that sense, Naxtra is more than a product. It is a signal. Longevity and power. One of the boldest claims around Naxtra is how long it can last. CATL says these batteries can endure over 10,000 charge cycles. To understand that, compare it with today's lithium packs, which usually manage 3 to 4,000 before their capacity begins to fade. In practical terms, that's the difference between a battery that can power a car for a couple of hundred thousand miles and one that could, in theory, stretch into the millions. That kind of lifespan changes how we see a battery. It is no longer just a component tucked into a vehicle or a backup system for a home. It begins to look like permanent infrastructure, something built to outlast the car itself or even the building it powers. If true, this level of durability could shift how we think about ownership. A battery might no longer be something that wears out. It could become the foundation on which entire energy systems rest, closing the gap. For years, sodium batteries were dismissed as second-rate because they couldn't match lithium's energy density. But CATL's numbers tell a different story. Naxtra reaches around 175 watt-hours per kilogram. That is only a small step behind the lithium iron phosphate cells already used in millions of electric cars, which average about 185. The difference is narrow enough that in real-world driving, most people would hardly notice. CATL says a typical vehicle with Naxtra could travel about 500 kilometers, or a little over 300 miles, on a single charge. That covers nearly every daily commute, every trip to work or school, and most long drives between cities. Premium lithium batteries still lead at the very top, offering higher density for luxury cars and long-haul models. Yet sodium is no longer the weak substitute. It is close enough to compete, close enough to serve the majority of drivers. That closing gap is what makes CATL's claim so unsettling and so powerful. The hybrid future. KTL's vision doesn't rest on sodium alone. With their Freevoy system, two chemistries are brought together inside a single pack. One side can be lithium, the other sodium. The pack quietly shifts between them depending on need, sodium stepping up in freezing weather, lithium taking charge on long highway drives. It's an elegant solution, showing that the future might not be about choosing one path, but weaving several together. Yet even as this design inspires hope, shadows remain. Lithium batteries have grown cheaper at a breathtaking pace, dropping faster than many expected. That makes sodium's economic case less certain, and CATL's silence adds to the unease. They have released numbers but not methods, promises but not proof. History is filled with energy breakthroughs that seemed unstoppable until they met the hard edge of reality. So Freevoy stands as a symbol of both promise and doubt. It shows what is possible when strengths are combined, but it also reminds us that trust must be earned on the road, not in press releases. The future could be hybrid, flexible, and resilient, or it could be another bright idea dimmed by unanswered questions. Scaling the salt. For sodium to matter, it must move beyond laboratories and headlines. A single cell tested on a bench is not enough. To change the world, these batteries need to be made by the millions, day after day. That is where most new ideas fail. Costs only fall with mass production, but mass production only begins when costs are already low. It is a loop that traps promising technologies before they ever leave the ground. CATL may be different. 
Their factories already dominate the lithium world, with production lines spread across continents. Because sodium cells can be built using many of the same processes, CATL can adapt existing lines rather than start from nothing. This gives them a rare advantage. Speed. They can scale faster than any smaller rival and faster than most governments can react. More than 30 vehicle models are scheduled to launch with sodium or hybrid packs this year. If those cars truly reach the road, we will have crossed into new territory. Even if costs settle higher than the boldest claims, the shift would still be historic. Batteries could become not a luxury, but a foundation woven quietly into homes, streets, and cities. That is how revolutions begin. In the end, we are left with more questions than answers. A promise has been made, wrapped in silence, carried on salt. If the figures are true, the ground beneath energy may already be shifting. If not, it may join the long list of dreams that never crossed into reality. For now, all we can do is watch as the first cars roll out, as the first packs are tested by time. Change often begins quietly, almost unnoticed. And perhaps, in this quiet moment, the future is already here, waiting for us to decide if we believe it.